Okay, this is this video is made at the request of username Fellblind. This is the tutorial for that piano program that I made a while back. Now it's changed a little bit since then, but it's still got the basics. Um, yeah, as you can see, the first form is now this, and it now has a real piano to it. So I'm going to be going over the code of how uh, how this is made and like what all was done. So I think my startup form was form three, yeah, form three. So yeah, this this is just aesthetics. It's not really anything special. Just a form, three labels, oops, and two picture boxes. Now I have it set up so that if you click the one that says Windows Vista, it will show Form 1. Form 1 is the, the, um, Form 1 is the keyboard that's based off of the Windows sounds. So like, it's like this. Yeah, that's Form 1. Now the reason the numbers are all messed up is because I did this pretty backwards. Now, in the uh, far left-hand side, you can see all the sound files that I have, and yeah, it's kind of a lot of sound files, but it's not really all that hard to keep track of. The way to add those is right here where it says My Project. Double-click that, and they'll start up looking like this. What you do, you click Resources, and right here it'll say String. You need to click where it says Audio. And the way I got all these files you go into the C drive, your computer, Windows, and then media. And then all of them are right here. Now, this will only work with .wav files. It won't work with these MIDI files or anything. And for some reason it won't work with this AC3 file. I don't know why. It just doesn't. But, point is... Yeah, this is how you get those. Now, these things that look different from the rest, the ones that say Note 1 through Note uh, 13, those, they didn't come from the media file. I actually got those from the internet. And I have them in this file, but it's the same process. You just uh, make them into a WAV file and then drag and drop. Uh, don't ask me where I got these, because it was a long, hard process, and I can't remember where it was anymore. All I remember was some YouTube video that had re relatively decent files. And I just, like, chopped it up in Audacity and whatnot. So, as you can see, there are 34 picture boxes on this, a menu strip, and two labels. Oh, and a text box. Um, the text box is set to read only. Where is it? Well, it's here. Yeah, right here. Oh, I guess it's not set to read only. Oh, enabled is it false. That's what it should be, right? And on the low, like, um, sorry, I'm getting jumbled on my words. Okay, you see how there are these gray boxes on both the black keys and the white keys? Those are the highlights, like the the things that show you which key is being selected. So it's both on mouse enter and key down. So the way to do that, first on the form load event, by the way these are picture boxes uh, 18 through 34, either 18 through 34 or 19 through 34, I can't remember which, yeah, 18 through 34. On the load event, you have to declare all of those, declare all their visibility as false. So picture box 18 dot visible equals false, and so on and so on. The way to get them to show up when uh, when the mouse enters, where's my mouse enter event? Yeah, right here. Now the the picture box, picture box one is right here I do believe yeah picture box stop it stop it my mouse isn't agreeing with me too well right now but 
that's not the point. But anyways, uh, picture box one. The highlight above it is picture box 25. So what you do is declare under the mouse enter, uh, declare its visibility to true. And under its mouse leave event, declare picture box 25's visibility to false. So that when the mouse uh, enters anywhere in the area of uh, picture box 1, picture box 25 will be visible. And when it leaves, picture box 25 will not be visible anymore, like so. And because of the way I did this, uh, the keys, these white and black things, their number is 25, 24 or less than their highlight. So 1 has 25, 2 has 26, 3 has 27, and so on and so on. Okay. Um, so that's the code to make the highlights work. Oh, I guess there's more than two labels. There's a bunch of labels. Yeah, all these little letters, they're labels. So for the menu, for the menu strip, uh, type in something like keystrokes and delete keystrokes and keyboard and switch to piano. For the keystrokes and delete keystrokes thing, the keystrokes are uh, down here in the key recorder where it shows you what buttons you've been pushing. So double click delete keystrokes and it's real simple, just textbox one dot clear. For keyboard switch to piano, it's just form two dot show me dot close. And keep in mind form two is the piano one. So back to the uh, more complicated part, putting the sound into it. I might have to split this video in two, so I apologize if I do. We're looking for the key down event. Now as you can see for picture box one, the key to make it have the sound is A. That's the key on your keyboard to make it work. So what you do in the key, in the form one key down event, you do if e dot key code equals keys dot a then text box one dot append text a comma picture box twenty five dot visible equals true my dot computer dot audio yeah all that stuff. But basically what this does, this line of code right here, it's saying if you push the a the a key on your keyboard, then do this stuff right here. This line of code means add this part of text to the text box. Append text just means add text. Picture box 25 visibility, that just sets the visibility to true. And this line right here, this is the line that makes it uh, play the noise. My.computer.audio.play my.resources.windows.ding comma audio playback mode dot background this part right here this is what you need to have some sort of audio play mode for it to play or else it'll uh, trip out on you background just means it'll play once and it'll stop you can also do let's see you can also do background loop that'll make it repeat itself forever but I don't suggest that because it's very annoying And I tried to make it so that um, it went from like highest pitch note to deepest pitch note, or vice versa. But that's not what's important. Now, this name right here, you'll notice that that name is right here. Yeah. If you're calling from my resources, then it has to be the, one of the names that's in your resources. So, yeah, it'll do that. And the visible dot true, if uh, if you just leave it like that, then the uh, excuse me, burp. If you just leave it like that, then it will keep it at visible. So you need to do a mouse uh, key up event. So, if e dot key code equals to keys dot a, then picture box twenty five dot visible equals to false. Again, real simple code. 
and you just do that for all of your things. Um, don't know if I explained everything yet. For the form 2, the one that's the actual piano, for the menu strip, the text box, well, pr pretty much everything is the same except for the sound files that you're using. And when you're done, it's just a product like... Yeah, product like this. And like I said, this is just purely aesthetics. These two are pictures I got off the internet. Uh, if you want to see the code for that, it's... If you click it, show form 1 for picture box 1. And show form 2 for picture box 2.